My name is Steve Layton, and I travel the world finding amazing and delicious coffee for you to drink at home. Some make coffee difficult to understand and complicated, but here it's my job to make it easy and fun and tell you what's in my mug. Hello everybody and welcome to In My Mug episode three, no four, three eight. I knew I was gonna do that. Keep going three three and it's four three, four three eight. Um, as the title say, I am your host, Stephen Layton, and thank you for joining me as always. Um, have I got any news to tell you? I'm trying to think, yeah. Do you go to London? Do you know where London is? It's the capital of England. Um, forget we have international ones. Um, Oxford Street. Know where Oxford Street is? Very busy street. Do you know where John Lewis is in Oxford Street? Yeah? Across the road from there, there's a... Um, a, what they call it, a flagship store for Uniglo, which is a Japanese clothing company. Yeah, keeping up. If you go into that building, go up to the third floor, you can drink Haspin coffee. How cool is that? We've opened a pop-up store there for the next three months, um, where it's called Hand, so it's has been and Uniglo. Um, but it's called Hand, and Hand means everything is hand-brewed, so you can have hand-brewed coffee, from handmade Kalita, um, hand-picked coffee, uh, handmade by Pizzi, who is the 2013, 2014, 2014 uh, Irish barista champion. I think it's 2014. Um, he is an all-round top guy and will make you lovely, tasty, delicious coffee. We also have some hand-picked teas served in handmade teapots from Staffordshire. Um, it's very much about hands. Uh, but please go check us out if you're in London. Um, Oxford Street, uh, 311. Uh, it's the Uniglow store opposite John uh, Lewis. John Lewis? Yeah, John Lewis, which is a very big department store in Oxford Street. There we go. Go check it out. Um, we should get to this week's coffee. Um, this week's coffee comes from Rwanda. It is uh, Musara, Musara Dukundi Kawa Nakara. Um, Masasa is a uh, is the name of the cooperative, um, which I was visiting in 2016 this year. Um, a very forward thinking, progressive um, cooperative for a very forward thinking and progressive country. Um, I love Rwanda because it just seems to be getting its stuff together, which is so unusual for Africa. Uh, Musasa means a place to make your bed. And the Dukundi Kawa means, I'm gonna to have to read this bit. Where is it? I know I knew this one. It means tasty coffee, I think it is. Love coffee, let's love coffee. So Dukundi Kawa means let's love coffee, which I think is really cute. Um, uh, we should go and see where this is in the map bit, um, and then I'll come back to you and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Map bit, map bit, how we've missed you. And how we miss going south instead of going across. It's lovely to go down and lovely to go down to the continent of Africa. The huge, massive continent of uh, Africa. Um, but the tiny country of Rwanda. Um, so let's look down into some detail here. Rwanda does not allow plastic bags. In fact, it will be confiscated if they find you with one. There's a back alley somewhere, somebody selling plastic bags, trying to get their fix. Um, but let's zoom down. Um, to uh, to Rwanda and to the uh, district of Masasa or the cooperative of Masasa. Uh, you can see all of the factory parts there and these are the views. I mean, it is the land of a thousand hills and you can see why it's called that. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful country and everywhere you look is vistas. And these are the, uh, the raised beds that they have that uh, have had everything taken off them but you get an idea of the terrace in there and the way that they're drying the coffee. Um, here's people kind of going through the coffee and picking for any defects or anything that uh, shouldn't really be in there. Um, working very hard and I always think it's really hot but they've always got things on their head um, here's one of the uh, mill managers working and uh, managing the machinery that's there and kind of nice to get a feel for the people this was a huge warehouse that uh, we went into that they were again hand sorting through all of the green coffee to find defects um, this place was lots of fun um, 
Here we've got some of the uh, equipment, the dry milling equipment that uh, sorts the coffee after the, the people have gone through and uh, hand sorted the green coffee. Um, yeah, people, more people. Um, these are some of the family of uh, some of the people who were hand sorting at the time. And uh, yep. Yeah. So you can see here where those photos come from is that exact part there. You can see all the warehouses. Uh, let's get a feel for the topography of uh, of the region. Um, the highest point is Volcano Karizmi B, which is 4,500 meters above sea level. And the lowest point is the Rizuri River, which is 950 meters, of course, landlocked, so has no sea level. Um, and that was the map bit. So when everybody thinks about Rwanda, and certainly me, I think about the, the terrible uh, disaster that happened in the early 90s, mid 90s, where the genocide happened. Um, and a country that was on its knees, uh, one in 10 of the population was killed during that time. A 10 million population went to 9 million in the space of two, three weeks. It was just unbelievable. Um, when I went to Rwanda last time, I, I spent some time visiting the uh, uh, the memorial uh, for the genocide. Um, and it's very important to the people of Rwanda that they don't forget what happened, so it never happens again. But it's also a feeling of forgiveness. Like, everybody's just getting on. You can either hate or you can move on. And coffee is something that is very, very... It, it, it runs through the heart of this change. So pre-genocide, coffee was very much a commodity, cheap item. After the genocide, there was a lot of aid went into Rwanda to help get them back on their feet. And one of the projects that was set up was called the Pearl Stroke Spread Project, which was a USAID project to help build washing stations in Rwanda and raise the quality. And there was a lot of input from specialty coffee people of the time um, and from universities in the US and how they could process better and make better coffee. Um, and it's certainly probably, it's the biggest change in coffee in my coffee lifetime um, from where it was to where it is now. Some of the coffee is of exceptional quality uh, and this one is no different. Um, Musasa has done a lot more to try and make that better. So let's go and look at the facts file and then I'll come back and tell you a little bit about Musasa. So hello and welcome to this week's fact file. As always, figures may change because we got them wrong. Um, but today we're focusing on Africa and in particular Rwanda. So let's find out some stuff about the country of Rwanda. So there are 35,000 hectares devoted to coffee of this very small country. It's uh, a fairly big part of their production, but they are a small producer, the 30th uh, biggest producer of coffee in the world. Total coffee production between 250 and 500,000 bags. Um, so, yeah, the most common varietals. You find an awful lot of Bourbon, a lot of Katayi, a lot of Katura, um, but mainly Bourbon. You do find a lot there. Um, there are about 4,000 coffee smallholders in Rwanda. So, for a small amount of coffee, there's an awful lot of... Um, uh, of people growing it and we are very proud to work with 12 different farms in Rwanda so the Musasa Nakara is a red Bourbon it is fully washed it's from the Ruli sector of the Rawashi district nearest city is Rubinio uh, altitude 1500 to 2000 meters above sea level obviously between March and November and that was the fact file So why is Masasa forward thinking? Well, Masasa helps people with school fees. I've got it here. Uh, they also have various social programs that greatly contributed to the livelihoods of their members. School fees, medical insurance are provided, along with training in the cultivation of coffee. And this is important. Um, the whole give a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach him how to fish and he can feed his family forever. Um, but also, it's... They have a special project where they help their farmers have a cow. Now, why would you want a cow? A pet, I guess. But no, the cow is there to give the family a ready supply of milk, which is something that, you know, is very much needed. But also it gives them fertilizer for their coffee plants. A lot of these producers will have 250, 300 coffee plants. If they have a cow, that's enough to fertilize their whole farm and make sure that the coffee is tasting better. Feed the soil that feeds the plant, um, that feeds the cherry, that feeds us. Uh, I'm getting very philosophical with all this stuff, aren't I? Um, now, I just think it is fantastic. It's, it's truly amazing what Masasa are doing um, as a cooperative, and they really are 
uh, raising their game to help other people help themselves. Um, there is lots on this one. Like for instance, uh, out of all of their washing stations, 2008 one came 13th in Cup of Excellence. Uh, in 2010 uh, came 7th. In 2011 24th and 26th. 2012 18 and 25. 2013 second. 2014 8th. 2015 21st. Really just doing amazing things. Um, consistently making quality coffee um, and from somewhere that really didn't um, people now are getting paid nearly twice as much as they were kind of 10 years ago for their specialty coffee and that's only on the up um, the altitude of the region is about 1800 to 2000 meters above sea level so perfect from the land of mountains right let's go hear Roland's daft facts and I'll come back with the espresso and cappuccino Rwanda is the most densely populated area in the whole of Africa. So many interesting facts about Rwanda that Roland could have used there. Like 65% of the parliament are women. Um, they are one of the only democracies in Africa that has gone forward in, their, in, in democracy um, since the year 2000. Um, what else is it? Every... The first Saturday of the month, everybody, including the president, has to go out and sweep the streets as part of their community survey. So many interesting facts. A really interesting uh, country. The land of a thousand hills, I think it is, as well. There's so many mountains and hills. Landlocked. Anyway, the coffee. As brewed, this is fantastic. Like, you get a real lemon zest, kind of fresh, freshly squeezed lemon with white sugar. The aftertaste is bizarre. The aftertaste for me is pure green tea. It really is green tea in a very, very positive and good way. It is a delicious brewed coffee. I'm a bit worried about this though. Um, the wonderful Chris has brewed it. I'm sure he will have done his very best with it, but I'm sure it's gonna be very acidic, so. Okay, so it's not white sugar, for sure. There is some lemon acidity in there, but it's not the most dominant thing. It actually has like a very melted butter kind of mouthfeel to it and, and flavour. It's very thick and viscous. I quite like that and I was not expecting to like the espresso. Wow, wow. let's get into the milk. Mm. I'm loving cappuccinos at the minute. Weird. I'm going through a very weird spell. The lime is much more prominent here. The milk has kind of brought that to the fore, but it's good because you've got the milk to combat that high acidity and make it creamy. It's a fantastic coffee. They're a fantastic cooperative. They are fantastic people. I am very happy to be working with Masasa. Long may that continue. Um, it's really, really cool. Okay, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching or listening if you're listening to the audio version. Um, and do remember, life is definitely too short for bad